Welcome back to another episode of Podcast P, presented to you by Prize Picks, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original. And fellas, we got to talk about the obvious, right? We just got a new setup here. The vibes in here is crazy. It looks great. They right? did a great job. Walk I like it. Walk us through what we got, Dallas. Well, we got the Palmdale zip codes over there to the left. 93552, shout out 93552. As we work our way from left to right, next, you're going to be uh, seeing the Campbell Hall logo where I went to school, which is, okay. you know, they're going to like that. Okay. And so moving forward to the next, to the next uh, painting we have there, legendary pick of you dunking on Birdman. Ah. Yeah, that's, that's right. And then, you know, it's only right that Jackie gets, you know, some love here with the ATL. And uh, yeah, I think they did a great job. Okay. There's a lot. Yeah, Monkey, what else new. we got on this side? I'm, you know, I'm kind of speechless, but you know, this is this is, <laughs> this is this is this is nice, man. I like the new a new art right here with the PP. You know, podcast P. podcast P. Of course, you know, we got the greatest, the latest in the in the in the the, the goat up there, Little Wayne. Yeah, yeah. We got you know why we got some West Coast connections. And we got mm -hmm. the you know the greatest of all time, the legend Nipsey Hussle. I mean, they we we got money. We got money. We, got we money. doing our shit. Jackie we got his feet up. He's I coming. Got my feet up today, man. This is man. We, 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 this can is we do marble. this? Can, this, can oh, we, we put our feet up the marble? marble. Yeah. Ish. Like, it's marble ish, concrete marble. <laughs> I get, I give a shout out to the producers, man. Suede they did, sofas, they, they did suede, suede. Man. man, look at the couch. I tried to give them another picture, but they 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 got that one. That's cool. What you was gonna go with? I was gonna go with a. I don't want to say because they might ah, do it. So okay. you know, they, you know, we 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 gonna we gonna our, sit on that our one. Our hey. can change. You okay. never know. Okay. But uh, this, <laughs> no, this look good though. It looks like, good. It's gonna look great on camera. It's gonna look. Got here, but I'm with it. I'm with we it. We gonna add to that. We, we gonna, gonna here. somewhere somebody gonna come through. through. What you gonna oh, it's put? A, it's a minimalist look. Ah, call okay. me the centerpiece. Centerpiece for the day. <laughs> yeah, I got a little tissue. This is real nice. This is real nice. Yeah, I'm we loving got the first it. guest gonna sit here today too. I think, right? Yeah, yeah. We are gonna definitely bless somebody. Somebody, somebody. definitely bless the, the 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 stage with our new appearance. Which one your zip code, P? Come on, nine three five five two. That was you. That was me. Fifty seven okay. Street East. You got a tattoo of that? It's on my arm. <laughs> You do? It's on my arm. Yeah. It's see, on my arm. I didn't even know. That. I was just playing. It's on my really, arm. See, do you yeah. have it? Do you really have yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, six six one okay. fifty seven Street East. That's my okay. block. Okay. Come on, y'all. Y'all ain't nine three five five two. See, see what I did for y'all. He Maybe. got his zip code on his arm. Come on. This is nice though. Cause shout out to podcast peeps. We doing man. well. We doing well, I'm fellas. Honest. I feel good coming to work. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, the, the game room. We got a game. We got a game room. Talk about the game nice. room. Ah. Just beat Jackie twice yeah. in FIFA, so ah. I'm undefeated. Say what? So you, so you owing two? Huh? <laughs> Are you owing two? Say what? You, you, <laughs> we're keeping record. The, uh, the game. We, we, gotta, we, we need a board. No, no, yeah, okay. yeah, we need a we board. We won't do that. We can't start now. What you mean? What you mean? We just we both downloaded the game at the same time. We it was already about... downloaded. The story's not even accurate. So who yawning? Somebody yawning? Can we get pillows on the couch, please? My say, <laughs> thank you on the new set. Uh, yeah, if we're gonna do that, we gotta do it right. We, gotta we do it can right. play him again. I'm so all, I'm all for that. Zero, zero. I'm all because I wasn't here to see it, so I don't. Yeah, you know. everybody zero zero and, in Dallas. He used to play FIFA more than me back in the day. He still know the and tricks. That's true. And I, like, how do you do that? I said, Jackie, I'm just using the left hand. But, but to be fair, the, the score was close. I, because I it asked was questions. A, it was a good game. Oh, okay. I asked questions. Okay. I was also there. You. So there, you're trans, you're 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 transitioning. Or you're trajecting higher than what he is. Exactly. Because you're, you're getting better. You're progressing. I'm getting better. I'm trying okay. to take my goalie out and go the whole length. Yeah. Oh, okay. He came oh, so in. He was and, and another so team, he wanted to tease you. And another team. <laughs> another team. He had Ronaldo. I uh, had Saudi Arabia. I had Waldo. You understand ah, what I'm saying? Okay. He had Ronaldo. I had Waldo. So it, and you couldn't a, find Waldo it, nowhere it, out there. <laughs> oh, no. He There's a lot of shit going on in y'all game. He the ball to shoot him <laughs> in the sky. He's holding it too long. I, learned, I didn't know how to, uh, to steal touch. the ball. Yeah, you got to have touch. Yeah, I didn't, game I didn't know. about touch. But I'm good. And y'all will see footage later on probably. All but, right, uh, well, I, yeah. let's, you know, we're, I think the, the, the audience will understand where we're actually going with the new set. But shout out to the old set. You know, shout mm -hmm. out to yeah, the new out. vibes that we're building shout going into yes. 2024. There, there is a sad part of that. It it's made like, us who we are, man. It is a sad man. part about it. It is sad. I mean, but it makes us feel good when we watch old episodes. Mm -hmm. and we, you like, know, man. It's just a timeline. You know what I mean? I can't wait to see how this one going to look. I know. I can't wait. I know. I can't wait to see. Can't wait look, to watch it. You know, and, yeah. see how we looking on this one. This is real nice. It's real nice, man. This is real nice. I'm really nice. loving it. Yeah, I can man. barely see it in these glasses, but you know, I'm doing my best. Doing your best. 
<laughs> Why you got glasses? Yeah, yeah. We have a little eye issue. I wanted to talk about it. So, but you know. we don't. Don't. Yeah, but no, don't, we don't, don't have to people. get into detail. Don't. It's just I'm having some eye issues. I, we gonna, so we I'm gonna, wearing the glasses right now. We, this isn't, you know, I'm not trying Craig to look cool and, uh, up here. We're going to Craig and Smokey your shit. Damn. Beyond, damn. Don't make me talk about your lippies. <laughs> do that right now, Pete. Damn, get away from the eye, bro. Okay, okay. It's okay. Oh, right. man. I welcome it. You'll be all right. In the meantime, we want to shout out our fans who've been locked in with us from day one. We appreciate y'all. Be sure to stay locked in to this new season, this new setup by liking, subscribing, and rating the podcast P, you know, channel, and, and uh, let's continue going on. We're taking a brief break from the episode to let you know Prize Picks has got you guys covered when it comes to making some money. And with the NFL season here, Prize Picks is helping me cash in, baby. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app, and with the NFL season underway, you can select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and turn $25 into $250. Prize Picks is easy and simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry less than 60 seconds, Dallas. It's also that time of the year where many sports are happening at the same time. And of course, Prize Picks is going to allow you to pick combo projections across football and basketball with specials so you can support all your teams while still cashing in. Be sure to visit prizepicks.com slash podcast P and use the code podcast P for a first deposit matchup to $100. And y'all already know what time it is. Cha-ching! So as we record this episode, the Clippers have won 11 out of their last 14 games, beating teams like the Nuggets, the Warriors. They beat the Warriors twice, the Kings twice, the Mavericks, and the Rockets. Some good teams in the league. Uh, some really important wins that we needed. And considering how things started after the James Harden trade, there was a lot of speculation. The media was killing you guys. What would you say in your mind was the biggest shift to kind of spark or cause this run that you guys have been going on? Honestly, I think it's just, uh, we just, you know, we got reps. Like, that's been the biggest shift. We got reps. Like, we've, we've got games played. We got to see what it looks like. We have tried out different lineups. And now we found, you know, a formula that works for us. Um, and I think, you know, we had conversations amongst each other of like wondering what style we're going to play like what does that look like going forward so we can just have consistency knowing going into games how the games are going to be played so we know all right james is going to handle it he's going to be our our point he's going to put us in pick and rolls we're playing through Kawhi. so now like everybody kind of knows all right what part of the game and where can i be effective in in, in figuring this out um and so like there's, there's just consistency you know what i mean i, I think that's been the biggest uh, thing that we've been able to kind of wash away is is being consistent to how we're going to play and who we're going to be. And that's just been working for us. You know, we, we've definitely picked up. We haven't necessarily started games off great, which is what we got to continue to work on. Right. But I think we've figured out how to win amongst everything else. So that's the most important, important thing about it all. Speaking of your boy, James Harden, he just, what, crossed what, uh, past, what, 20, 25,000 points 25, on Thursday. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot. That's a, that's a that's, big college That's big, big milestone. Yeah, we, didn't, we didn't necessarily s s like celebrate either. Like, I was going to ask you that too. What was y'all celebration we, post game? We, I mean, I, you know, everybody congratulated him and, you know, was proud for him and happy for him. Um, but we, it wasn't like a, you know. It was like you, when you won I, the Olympics. I, yeah, not that, yeah, it was like the Olympics. <laughs> you, just, you win it and it's shit. What, what, what we do from here? Um, nah, I mean, thinking of it now, like, we should have had a, more of a moment. We should have been, you know, having a water, <laughs> champagne, you know, a little water shower in the locker room. We should have did something for him thinking about it now. Um, but, you know, had it been me, I, I probably would have went out last night, had a good time, enjoyed myself. I know when I eclipsed 15,000, you know, I, I had a little celebration <laughs> at the out. house. Yeah, I, man, we celebrated that, 15K. <laughs> I think I definitely went out and we celebrated. And I had a cake. My my wife got me a cake. We celebrated 15k. So I'm sure he did something for 25k. That's 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 a lot of buckets, bro. I think James did something. I was gonna say he had that. to do something. 25,000 yeah, points. Yeah, he should. Yeah, he should. That was that was. That was what is say. that like? What is that an actor like comparable in actor talk? Like 25,000 points. What is that in actors' terms? 
what? How many? I guess movies? to say how many movies. How many you done movies? Did? Yeah. Yeah. Like I say, are y'all proud about the movies you've done? Because you can make a lot of movies and no, they just not be. You would never be movies. proud of every movie that you've done. Okay. Sometimes you got to think, and I'm just being honest for actors that know some some jobs, you 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 would take for a check, because okay. it's it's like. You, you know, if things was going slow yeah. and you did a job and they called you and you like, it's with such and such, you might, they might had a name at the time, yeah. but they not popping as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it was just something to get some quick money. Yeah. And you was like, bam, but you know which ones are the good ones. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Even at the cost of it being like detrimental to your career, like you'll still be like, you know what? I need it. Yep. Need or, or you can just, <laughs> or you can just have a lot of confidence and just be like, you know what? I'm gonna wait it out. Yeah. I'm gonna wait for that one. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But Speaking of the um, the the game the other night, man, you know we we kind of worried about you because you missed the game. Yeah, you had a little little yeah, I had a little injury, man. Yeah, it was it was something minor. It was something minor for the folks out there. Nah, PG is not hurt. It was just <laughs> that I was had, going crazy. Yeah, they. they I mean, uh, I played forty one minutes the here night you before. Go, here you go, the first one. I'm like, damn. Yeah, man, he's like, damn. I played forty one the night before, and it was just small little thing. I think my hips, like talking to doctors and trainers and stuff like that. I think just my hips weren't aligned, and it was causing a little irritation on my pelvic bone or my. I don't want to say the wrong shit. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, bro. And like, uh, Doctor P. Doctors Here be like, oh, that, yeah. that does not, that makes no sense. Uh, <laughs> but it was, <laughs> it was something to do with just my alignment being off, and it was, it was pulling on uh, my, you know, groin, and causing irritation there, and uh, the game against Sack, it was just, I was getting sore, right. and then I felt it. Uh, in the beginning of the game, tried to play through it, and then like I set out that f at the end of the first quarter, set out a lot of minutes going into the second quarter, and then when I got back into the game that second quarter, I was just like stiff, like I couldn't move. I was like oh. making, I couldn't, I just couldn't move. And but you're good now. Yeah, yeah, I'm good right. now. I got some rest, took time off of it. It feels like good again. Cause I was getting hit up too. Hey, it was you the know, front you, sciatic. You know, I'm a Clipper fan. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they was coming oh, they at was blowing me. you up. You know, they yeah. was like, what you going to do now? What's happening? You going back? Go yeah. I'm like, I'm here. I'm here with you, sciatic. Be. You know, yeah, you got the sciatic. back sciatic. I got the groin sciatic. Hey, you're doing good right now. <laughs> you're back. You ain't no worry about it. So, let the fans know one more time you good. I'm man. good. We good. I think good. it was also a good opportunity for, you know, because throughout the season, some, some you're going to get injured. It's just part of the sport. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a couple games where you sit out, whatever it may be. Uh, but just to see the team still perform mm -hmm. without you on the floor, I think was probably super encouraging for mm -hmm. for the team as a whole. James stepped up. James probably played his best game. You know, he was mm -hmm. doing everything, yeah, but it, it was encouraging to watch like, hey, yeah, next man up and everything seemed to still be clicking. Yeah. Which How was, is that though, Pete? You, what? You have the groin injury and your team is out there playing. I know you. Knowing you competitive, mm -hmm. how how bad was it sitting on that bitch? Like, damn, I can go play right now. I can get it here. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it it was it was bittersweet. Like, you want to be out there, you want to you want to be in the trenches with your boys, but you know, in in the atmosphere, you know, watching the crowd, watching them go on runs. Then when Warriors started coming back, it's like, damn, these are the moments that like I want to be in the tight situations, the games close, scores tied. Like, these is the moments you want to play for. Like. We need to get a stop. Like, damn, I wish I could be out there to help get a stop. Um, but you know what? I was proud of, like, the guys that stepped up. Shout out Amir Coffee, who stepped up, played huge for us. Um, and he's a guy that, like, you know, he's so talented. And I think it was a great confidence booster that he can play at that level. And to be honest, he was, like, at, like everything he did, if he didn't do that, or if he was one shot short, if he was, like, his baskets was timely. His rebounding was his rebounds were timely. Like his steals were timely. Everything he did affected the game right when we needed it to. You so. know what I, I I like watching him because you know I've never really seen Coffee really play, mm -hmm. but really the only time is when I went to when we was in Vegas mm -hmm. summer league and I went to the the, the uh, shootout to practice with you mm. and he was doing the the, the, uh, the drills, drills and stuff. With you. Yeah, and I never seen him like play at all yeah. and I was like damn this dude is good why don't he play right and last night he played how he was playing with you when right. y'all was doing y'all run well, I was people like, don't know do man that. he's extremely talented like he can handle he's strong he can defend he rebounds he got a great feel for the game makes the right decisions yeah. um, he's just one of those guys that can kind of get in his head and that affects 
his confidence a bit. Um, but when he's confident and when he's trusting himself, man, he can hoop. I'm glad he got his shot last night. Yeah, time. yeah, he and definitely. Your boy, our boy Pal did his thing too. Norm always, Norm, Norm, be Norm was what? Leading Norm the league in field goal? At three point percent? I don't know, he balling. Top two or <laughs> number one? Like he didn't want to be dying as soon as <laughs> he just be gone. Throw that bro. shit, bow he throw leg, that, that tray yeah. down there. What right next said? to that little bow leg. Yeah, uh, yeah. that bow leg all the way. He be balling. Shout out Norm, man, Norm hooping, man. Guys, guys played well yesterday. I was proud of them. So speaking of uh, kind of playing minutes and so forth during the game, it's been a hot topic of conversation throughout the summer, I think, leading up to this season on the star players, how many minutes they're playing, and guys were sitting out. I know you and Kawhi got kind of uh, ridiculed, per se, for, for not playing, but the media has really been focused, and the fans, on mm -hmm. the minutes of the star players and Kawhi's response to a question, I believe it was the other night, but it was just so funny to me, like Kawhi's answer to, you know, if playing, you know, they asked him, hey, do you, you know, what are your thoughts on if playing so many minutes, you know, how much does that help the Clippers win more games? And he just basically said, probably if your best players play longer, <laughs> you're most likely going to get a win. And it was just, yeah, it's like an obvious answer. Yeah. But uh, what do you think about that response? I mean, well, that's, Kawhi being Kawhi, it's a rhetorical question. Yeah, being okay. asked, like, you know, of course you're gonna win games if your best players play. Like that's that's not like some no. new shit. You exactly. know what I mean? That's the whole reason or the whole point of like this whole, you know, guy sitting out, you know, that's why it's so relevant. It's because like teams aren't succeeding or or playing as well as they should be because the guys aren't playing. So yeah, I mean that's that was just a rhetorical question. Uh, and, and and Kawhi answered it better than I would. You know, I I probably am like, duh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love duh. Kawhi. Tony Russ answered it. Again. Bro, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, a what little, comes after little that. head shake before he yeah. says anything. Like, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. what? <laughs> Next question. Next question. So, uh, P, when this episode drop, you will be playing in Indiana. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. we. I don't know you used to play there. Mm -hmm. And you done been there, what, plenty of times playing them again. You know what I'm saying? Last season, this season, whatever. But I want to know, how do you think they going to give you the love when you get out there? From history, you got to expect the worst, right? Like, I've been booed. This is what, going on seven years now since I've been there. Mm -hmm. um, I've been booed every time going there for seven years uh, straight. And so I'm expecting the worst, but I don't know. I don't, I, I feel like there's a, a part of Indy that's kind of hashed it based off of the re relationship built with Tyrese. So like you forgotten? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like I said, it, it won't surprise me if I'm booed the eighth time there again, or the you seventh time I should you, say. You think you might get uh, some, co some coach love or something? Like like when I went to your game when you played San Antonio, everybody was booing Kawhi, and they were like boo every second. And Pop got on the mic and was like, "Hey, be respectful, y'all. Blah blah blah. You gonna do this over here? He's okay. Hey, you yeah. got a championship for us. Yeah, you was there. I forgot. I you was, was there. Yeah, you was there. Yeah. You was there. That was that. Uh, Indy won't do that. Let's be. They not gonna do you like that. Indy won't do it. unless Larry Bird himself comes down and like grabs the mic. Yeah, Indy. The coaching staff's gonna be like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Indy, Indy's not doing that. Let's let's be a hundred there. Um, but that moment was it was dope. Like it was dope. I think in the sense of like, Pop just finally like, all right, we had enough. Like, let that shit go. He's won here, he's a champion, like he's put a, a banner up there, he's, he's done great for here. Like regardless of how the situation played out, he, let's, let's embrace the man that, you know, won us championships, right? Because being a fan there, I was really like annoyed with it. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? Because I was sitting next to- It was real, every time. Like, I, was, I was sitting yeah. next to Spurs fans and asking them, like why, why they doing that? He got y'all a championship. Yeah. So I was like, we don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Because at, <laughs> like, at that point, like, they're booing more than they're cheering. Like, you're booing more than cheering for your team. Like, you're, it was just, it's just like, bro, like, let that shit go. Like, it's old now. Like, he ain't played for that team in how many years? Yeah. yeah like, come I, I'm, on. I'm, I'm, I'm on the other side. Like, I think it's completely okay for you the You think fans. it's all right? Yes. I mean, they're fans. They, they fans pay their money? Get, 
you know, with, you know, obviously some fans get out of control. Russ has talked about it. Like maybe there should be like they can't have X amount of drinks at the game. That's too much. Yeah. But booing and cheering is like your most basic form of like fan expression. So I get booing. What does it matter, bro? I get booing an opposing player that like in the situation where like Pat Bev goes to Oklahoma, like they're going to boo the shit out of him for his history of hurting Russ in, in yeah. that moment, right? Like, I get that. Like, you're going right, to boo, right. boo an opponent that, like... But a championship But, like, person? someone that, like, one of yours, like, I don't get that. Like, you're booing one of yours. But he's not one of yours anymore. Is this better? Is he's this one better? of... Fan. He's I, one of yours. He I, won a championship for you guys. Of like, course. He's, he's of one of course. ours. Like, of course. It didn't end well, but, like, that's that's life. People go on. So people so take saying, different so jobs. Boom. Like Dallas. Uh, all right. We'll see if... We'll see. That's like, I don't want, actually, that's a bad example. But like, you? that's like, let's say you're in a relationship. Like, are you not like, so you're just talk. you typically, most people talk bad about like their formal relationships rather than good. Some people talk good. But again, in the realm of sports, the fans have to be able to express they're cheering for their team. They're feeling like they're a part that. of it. They're it trying to get in Kawhi's head. They want to distract him during the game. And who knows? Maybe Pop even distracted him because that was could have been even more of a distraction, I like mean, stopping the game. It, it, the shit was crazy because – so I, I get checked out, like, right? I'm getting subbed out. So I'm walking <laughs> to the bench, and I hear, like, this distinct voice, like, over the mic, but I'm thinking it's coming from the, the Jumbotron. So I look up, like, all right, there's nothing up there. Then I'm thinking like, you know, there's, it's like the, someone talking on a speaker, like there's a fight breaking out or something. Like they're trying to calm or deescalate the situation. So I'm like looking in the crowd now, like, all right, ain't shit going on. Then I just so happen to turn around and I see pop at the, the, the scores <laughs> table and he's got the mic. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, he did. Like, he just like, grabbed it too. He checked sure it and everything worked. and was mad. Oh, all right, I'm let, I, cause we in story mom, I'm gonna let you have that one. Uh, what that in here? Said he just grabbed it too. <laughs> we in story mode, so I'm gonna let you have that one, buggy. But then yeah, so he so he's like talking, and then he's like, yo yo, like that's not who we are. Like we like that that's that, that, come on, San Antonio, we're better than this basically. And then after that, the booze went crazier. Like they were booing them before, but yeah. then after that, the booze went crazier. Like they was booing everybody. Like whoever caught it, they didn't give a fuck. Like they were just booing people. <laughs> um, so I was like, damn, like, hey, what, like that now that's wrong. You don't disrespect pop. I, I thought that was that very one. disrespectful yeah, yeah. to that's for the, them to, that's that he's still there. You shouldn't be still yeah. was booing after he said what they he said. Pop. Like yep. right after that, they he him. dropped the mic. Boo. Yep. You know, in college I actually got booed at a home game. How did you like that? Well, it was due to the fact that I, I said some unkind words about one of the cheerleaders and the football guys came to the game. And uh -huh. when I checked in at a home game, bro, uh -huh. they were booing me. <laughs> you got booed before? Have I got booed yeah, before? you ever got booed before? Not yeah, on, yeah. on the road, yeah, but like, there's on also- On the road? Yeah. Uh, yeah, when okay. I go to Indy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like you know, You wanna know a funny story? And one of like the worst, like, it, it made me like, after that moment, I was like nervous going to, to road games. Okay. So me, like, so it, it was in college, right? So we took like, you know, you had, you just got your fresh MacBook. You take hella pictures on your MacBook, right? You're doing all the little filters and shit. Uh-oh. And then I posted it on my uh, Facebook. Okay. <laughs> and so we're gonna go play. We went to Louisiana Tech. Never, never forget this. So me and my teammate, Mike Ladd, like we both like just took pictures and like, it wasn't like, like, weird shit but it was just like all right you could tell they just got a macbook like they're happy about their macbook okay <laughs> so we go we going down to, to louisiana tech bro and like it's a normal game they didn't they didn't pull the shit up until literally tip off they got like they fucking photo on big <laughs> ass like uh big ass posters like pictures that we had just took and they're just like <laughs> waving them in the crowd bro Oh, that was like was it my the bathroom stomach selfie dropped. one or was it? Yeah, like it was like thing? bathroom <laughs> selfie shit. Like you know, you trying to like you trying to like you know, know light skin know. look with I'm, some of the pictures. Well, I get what you're saying, bro. That was the most <laughs> embarrassed booed. I was for a game. Like I was fucked up that game. <laughs> I like, got booed before, huh? I got booed. Before. You got booed before? At Staples Center at the time. For what? Dealing with Ray J. Ah, uh, Ray J had to perform. <laughs> So you caught a stray. <laughs> and he tried, he was performing Wait a Minute at the time. And it was like I was his dancer. 
<laughs> so I went out oh, there gosh. one dance inappropriate and then make him look stupid. They, was, <laughs> they literally booed us the whole time. It was like, y'all need to wait a minute and get y'all ass up. Yeah. Here. Is there video of this? I think it might be. It was a while ago. Look yeah, up Ray look. J performing at the Staples Center. We literally got booed. I'll never forget it in wait, my wait, life. Wait, wait, wait. They so, try to blame it on me. So Ray J's performing at Staples Center. Yeah, he and had you're me, on the stage dancing. Me, no, no, listen. Me his home, me and his homeboy Shorty Mac, we was out there, you know, like to just be the hype man, yeah. basically. On so you're on the stage with him. No, we, we're on the on the court. We we all on the court with him. Like he's out there at halftime. Oh, okay. So okay. It's not like a performance. This is like a halftime. It's a halftime, show. halftime, okay. halftime okay. Lakers or Clippers? Uh, I don't know what team they was. It was the Lakers for sure, but okay. I don't know what team they were. But yeah, Lakers. I thought you were asking me <laughs> Lakers or Clippers, but yeah. Lakers and literally we went out there and had the worst time of our life. <laughs> I thought Ray J career was done after that. I was like, wow, we really got booed in front of all these people and we from LA. Right. <laughs> I was like, so this ain't was out right. There, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, they was, yeah, we need to wait a minute too. And then, and then they just booed. And, and they booed Did us. Ray J get mad at you guys? Listen, the court. Ray J would tell y'all this story today is no lie. We literally got booed. I will never in my life <laughs> ever forget it. That's funny. And I do blame myself. It was me. I was out there looking <laughs> stupid. That's funny. I had, I think, some dumb ass clothes on, <laughs> just out there, wait a minute. I didn't know the words to the song. They was just like, get these dumb ass booze <laughs> up out of here. But yeah, that's that's So we all can relate. Story. That's God, very relatable. Yeah, we've been booed. That's very relatable. We've been booed. We've bo we been booed up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We all been booed up. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> and man, we we need we need some more of that shit, dog. We oh, we need you. some more stories. I know you got stories for days. Oh, you know, I'm gonna be honest too. All you gonna the be time. honest, and you you 50, so you I know you got some stories. I I I'm 42, P. Don't do oh, that. Oh yet. my bad. You my know, bad. don't do that too. There's my people bad. looking, watching. My bad. Um, anyway, <laughs> please. I want to know has your like speaking of all this born and all this stuff. So has your perspective changed since the time you used to be in Indiana? to you going back now, like how, like in many ways, like foundational pieces of your life and career bloomed in Indy. Yeah, I mean, I've I've matured from the situation. Um, you asked me this five, six years ago. No, like, hell no. I was in a, a totally different place of just fuck Indiana. Like I don't don't want no parts of Indiana. Um, I was just in a, a, a different mindset. Um, but now, like I've, I've matured, you know, I've matured, I've, I, I understand business. I understand what was the right move for me, what made sense for me. Um, I understand that understand that situation, what made sense for them, where where they're at as an organization. But I mean, there was, you know, I was more so like, you know, I, I felt like I gave everything I had in that seven years there. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, saw myself as embodying, you know, what hard work, what um, blue collar, what, you know, just that working hard mentality was. I felt like I was, you know, embodying that what Indiana was about. Um, and so, yeah, I was, I was a little bittersweet when, when I left. Um, but looking back at it now, like, you know, they're blossoming, they're in great hands, they're doing they great. Definitely great. I always look at it because it's the team that first picked you. you yeah, know? and so I, I you like, know, I know you got always some. Yeah, there's love assume, there. You know, there's love. for sure love there. Like, there's for sure love there. There's still people there, like that I talk to uh, from time to time that still work for the organization. Um, there's, there's, there's still love there. You know that that, that won't change. Um, you know, there's restaurants I still love to go to there. There's, you know, places you know there that I still love. The people you know, for the most part have been great. Midwestern people, like, there's, there's, they're just different. You know, I'm sure you can chime in on that. I'm sure you can give, you know, your opinion on, you know, the Midwest, you know, that love there. But, yeah, there, there, there's a special place in my heart. I wanted Indiana. to know, you, you didn't go to none of them places that uh, – Tyrese said, huh? The food. Nah, I ain't never heard said. of those. What'd he say? There's probably, I mean, you haven't been there in a while, so there's yeah, probably there some might new be spots, some new spots. I'm actually, new we gonna, I'm going to get with him when we go down there. I'm going to get with, with Tyrese I was when gonna we go down there. Just ask you that. That's why I was He got to take me. He got to take me. Yeah. He got to show me the new spots. Shout I only knew like Country Kitchen. That was my spot. Shout out Country Kitchen. They still there? Indiana was fun. I think they're man. still there. Yeah. Still there? It was a great time. Indiana like I lived on the lake. So it was a fun, good man. time. It was a good time when we were day, out there. Baby. Jet skis, go fish, oh, be on so the water. Fun. The studio, rapping. The studio. Oh, oh my god! Didn't come up with one EP. 
We did it. Nothing. We did. We, we didn't take advantage. Did, did, did we didn't take advantage of, of that. Did, did you get rid of all the, all the equipment? I got all the equipment. I got all the equipment. So those songs could still be in there. Yeah, yeah. I don't he know if we could play those. He had a cold studio though. Yeah. It was nice. It was nice. Real. It was like, official. Yeah, it was definitely like you was a real rapper and didn't rap one song. Didn't rap one song. Nah. I'd go up there, cut everything on. <laughs> I don't know how to work this shit. It cut was, everything back off. Nice, go though. like it was depressing. I, like, I didn't know how to work it. My favorite part was the 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 the. Uh, the down, like the basement. The basement, room. Yeah, yeah, that was my room. theater. That was, that was the one. Sleep on that big circle yeah, sofa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the movie theater. The movie theater, that was yeah. Fun Cause I got to play the game on there. Yeah. And I ain't never played a video game on a big ass screen that yeah. big. It, it should was be like, dark. You be locked I was like, in. Damn, this is nice. <laughs> I was like, I hope they don't come down here and try to find a bit, place to sleep. I'm gonna be that <laughs> night. No, nah, it was nice though. The little see through the what you had this like the the, the glass, glass windows. Yeah. yeah, so you could see right through, see out right on the right. water. I, I enjoyed my time there, man. Indiana was a great place and kind of speaking back to the Midwest thing. Like there was times, Jackie, where I'd go out there and just like, I wouldn't even get a ticket back home. I would just, I'd be down there for like two, I, I would stay for sometimes two, two and a half weeks. But even when he was on a, a road trip, you know, I'd be at his house. Maybe his pops was there, but I would even still go out to downtown Indiana. And it's just the environment, the people, everyone's kind, that Midwest kind of spirit it, it is a lot different did you do fishing different. when you was out there oh yeah me and his dad used to fish I all mean, the time i remember was fun. fishing was fun one time yeah. jackie i didn't know but you know pops was there and i wanted to be respectful to him because i was like pete like you think i can i can go out right like i don't want to be rude coming back to the crib all late <laughs> so i went up to his dad i'm like hey yo pops like you good if i like he's like yeah man go so i was like all right cool walking in the crib at like three in the morning <laughs> you would be respectful yeah yeah, yeah i had to had to but we yeah. would fish all the time but let it, let, it let him know how what type of friends Pete got, you know? You know so that was good yeah, you that was did. Good. Yeah, that was you good. Know, he was around good people. Showed well, showed well. Yeah, that's good. Um, but speaking of Indiana, they just got done playing the Milwaukee Bucks and there was some uh, a few things that transpired during that game that was interesting. The first kind of storyline was Giannis ended up having uh, a franchise record with 64 points in a game. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, that really wasn't the biggest story. And obviously, a lot of people know about the ball incident, which we'll get to. But during that game, he also did check our boy Tyrese pretty, pretty hard. I don't know. Did you see the clip of it? Did yeah, you yeah. think it was intentional? Oh, for sure. Okay, because you see he, his face. Yeah, yeah but once he sure. was done, it was kind of like Giannis kind of played it off like it was like my bad. I didn't mean. You yeah, know what nah, I mean? It, 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 was, it, it was purpose. Exactly. It was intentional. Like, it, it was, was <laughs> it was definitely intentional. It was one of those like. It was one of those like you hit your little brother, he start crying, yeah, he about like, to go my, tell mom like, Yo, sh sh you okay? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sh yeah. It was one of those situations, Ty bro. Tyrese's face, like, <laughs> he kept doing like, yeah, like, bro, like, what, what is that? Like, like, what is that for? Uh, it was definitely, it was definitely intentional. Did you see the signing after they go get James Johnson like? Immediately the next yeah, day, the, um, I yeah, thought yeah. that was funny. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah all right, we, we need an enforcer here. That. Like, we need somebody that. here. <laughs> and um, but also during that game, Giannis was furious, which I don't think I've ever seen him that upset. And man, he was he was he was really upset. He mm -hmm. he, he you could he was he was mean in business right there. But he was standing he on business. Lock, you say he yeah, was, he was standing he, on business. Uh -huh. He was definitely standing on business. He was, about he was to trying go, to go get that yeah, passing. Get that passing. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> reportedly, you know, the Pacers kept the game ball for a rookie that scored his first point in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And so, just in your experience. Uh, in your time throughout the NBA is giving a ball to a rookie who scored his first point. Is that even a thing? Yeah, that's definitely a thing. That's most important. Like, really? Yes. You, mm. you, like, that's your first basket. Okay. Like, you should get the game ball. Like, that's triumphs everything. Everybody, that's everybody knows that. Really? Everybody knows that. You got a you got the game ball on your first. I got the game ball. What the thing Indiana does too? They'll take the game ball and they'll like they'll they'll send it to someone. And they'll like paint on it. They'll like do this whole thing. Uh, I don't. I don't know if they still do it. But when I was there in Indy, that's what they did for me. Uh, it was we played San Antonio, so it's it's like black and gray writing on there. Says the score, points I had, um, and you know my stats for that game. But yeah, they you you should get the game ball. We did it. You know with Kobe Brown. We've done it with Jordan Miller. Um, you know, Musa when he was a rug, like that's that's like a, a rookie thing. You get but the game what, ball. But what do you do in a situation when you Giannis Franchise and you score sixty four, 
Say, for instance, you did it. Yeah. And a rookie scored your night. Two. And you got, <laughs> yeah. Two points two for points. 60. And I mean, you that's... scored 70. What you going to do, P? You, don't you want that, that memorabilia too? That ball? Not, not, nah, not really. Cut it in half? <laughs> not really. So, so you think Giannis overreacted? I, you can't say I can't say he overreacted because that's that's maybe he values that. I don't value that. Like that's not. I understand. You know what I, I mean. So I can't say like I can't be like ah he overreacted. Like I don't know like that. Maybe that he values like all right. I I need that for I, I my. I think he was more upset it being a rookie. Like it just like it just I'm, you know what I'm saying. Well, think, it's because it's that's more of like a home team thing, right? Like right, right for the for. Indiana to take the ball, their road team, that's like their, okay. that's that's where the problem lies. Like you don't get that right to just take the ball because you're the road team. The home team gets that ball. They get that right. So in that, you know, in, under that light, like that gives Giannis the reason. And I think I think like I've heard that it was beyond this game right here. Yeah, because there was there was you know he, he, in yeah. the playing games like there was some animosity there already to begin with. Mm. So I think some of that kind of bled into he said. He said, I think they gave me the ball, but I don't think it's the one. <laughs> I think they gave Here me you the go, ball, dude. but I don't think it's the one. <laughs> he's, he's had history with that. You know, the whole ladder incident on the road. Mm -hmm. They're not letting him warm up. So mm -hmm. I wonder how much of, you know, but so you think that Giannis for sure knows. You think they do that in Milwaukee where the, if a rookie scores a team that they give the ball? Like, did you yeah. do that in Oklahoma? Uh, did we? See, maybe it's from, from team to team. Like, you know, you just don't I know how so. other people I think, operate. I think we did give them the game ball. I, th I think we did give him the game ball. Because uh, my rookie there was T. Ferg. I think he did get the game ball. I think that that's like a known thing, though. Like, coach grabs the ball and delivers it to, hmm. you know. So, I guess Giannis just got to know first the basket. rules. Yeah. Just it almost looked like rules. maybe he didn't know that. Because, yeah. Yeah. But, again, it is the franchise record. Maybe at least just have a conversation with the guy. Like, but the only thing I, Give him the stat I, sheet. I understand. Give him the stat P, sheet. P said it's the give whole the team's ball. It's the home so team. So they it's should the, get the ball. That's yeah. where they should lose no matter what. Yeah. If it's, if it's no matter if he scored two points, whatever, he was home. Home team usually gets the they ball. They should get the ball. So, But I, I hear I hear Carlisle, like, that's a thing he does, though. I hear he takes, he he likes to take the, the ball, the game ball. All he, I know is it's going to be somebody, a, like, Yeah, I hear that's like a, a Rick Carlisle thing. It's going to be a big thing. thing now, every time now, watch. We, uh, uh, that's gonna gonna more be, drama for the yeah, NBA. People going to be locked drama. in. His brother uh, was going the ball? wild too. Uh, <laughs> his brother was going crazy too. Oh, yeah. It yeah. was chippy. It was a chippy game. It was It was fun to watch. There's been a lot of chippiness around the NBA lately. So if you score 50, <laughs> so P, I want to know if you score 50 this season, you getting the game ball? I don't really care about it. 83. If I score 83? 100. Yeah, I want that ball. Yeah, see? <laughs> and that. there's a rookie that scored two, and you're, you're and, playing and you uh, had 83. Washington Wizards. And I had 83? Yeah, and you're not home. I'm getting that ball for And me. we're on the road. I'm still in there for you. <laughs> yeah, we're getting that ball. 83? I don't, no, nah, I don't, like, there's other ways to, like. Pete, that's a big accolade. There's and other you, ways of, like, of remembering that moment. Like, I could get, like, everybody to sign my jersey. Like, well, I won't wear this jersey the again. Ball, like, there's other the moments. The ball is more. Y'all, everybody touched that ball and played with it, and you scored. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Go on to the next I'm question, man. I ain't gonna finish what I gotta say. I'm good. Nah, I'm fucking with, with you. I'm fucking with you. Nah, but like, hey, that's. I'm gonna let that rook Shit. have it. Like that's that's a moment he can't have back, right? Like I could. Yeah. Technically, I could maybe go score eighty four or eighty five. Like, there's still opportunity out there. Like, yeah. that's that's a moment for a rookie that, like, that's a once in a lifetime that won't happen again. Like, you already are established or you already have scored that first bucket. You can't get that back. Like, there's no redo on that one. Like y'all rookie right now, first. did he get the ball? His first game he scored. Yeah, <laughs> both of them. Oh, Kobe oh, Brown oh. got the ball after the game, and our other rookie, Jordan Miller. Got the game ball after after one of the games okay. let's, that he let's, scored in that they scored in. I want to get your thoughts on Kobe Brown because he's been getting some minutes and he's in the rotation. Like, what do you think of his game? Because uh, before it seems like he just got like inserted and is playing like important role. You guys have been very encouraging to yeah. him with with shooting. You know what I mean? Make yeah. or miss. Talk a little bit about his game because he's he's been getting some burn. Yeah, no, he's he's really like I look at him like he's baby Draymond like. 
I say that loosely. Yeah, like okay. without, yeah, without, say, without the you know, without the the pepper and the dog food, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's Okay. I pepper like that and the dog, dog food. Pepper yeah. and the dog food. Yeah, without the pepper and the dog food. He's 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 baby Draymond. Like he can do a little bit of everything. He like ultimate glue guy, ultimate team first guy, makes the right plays, he rebounds, toughness, uh, you know, spreads the floor, he can play off the ball. Like he just got a great feel and, and he's been he's been playing great. I liked like, him in yeah. summer league. He was perfect, like Good. fit him right in with us and he's he's picked up. And, and speaking of Draymond, we got we got to mention Draymond a little bit. Come on, we, shout we, out Draymond. We can't we can't, we can't overlook this and act like this didn't happen. Yeah, like like Man. I just don't know what what Draymond can do at this point. It's I just, just I, it's like I, I don't, don't know. like I don't that one don't was know. the worst one. I don't know where I don't know where like I, he's a great guy, <laughs> but <laughs> it's like great husband, yeah. great friend. But I guess I would I I guess he's a great teammate. Yeah, but. <sighs> I yeah, but know, even man. from a teammate's perspective, I'm not sure that specific like situation is the best example of being a good teammate. The Rudy one, I can yeah. I can understand that one. Like yeah. I would appreciate that. But, you know, I it's got to make some of those guys. I mean, and, and then Honestly, they have to I'm, be careful with yeah. what they say. They yeah. can't really speak on it too much cuz then it's like we can't throw our boy underneath, Under the you know, bus. What I mean, yeah. we can't do that. So like Honestly, I'm like speechless. Like I don't even know what to say about it. Like it's it's it just, it's crazy. And then it sucks because social media, oh yeah. my God, they just make you either not like a person I don't, more. I don't like that they're painting him that he's crazy now though. Yeah, like, like he gotta go to therapy Yeah, and all like I, I don't like that part. Like, I, I, all right. I think like, that's, let, he's, yeah. he's not crazy. Like, let's yeah. stop the narrative yeah, that he's he crazy, crazy and like something's just, wrong with him. Like there's something going on at home. Like, come on, like we gotta chill with that. He just overprotective. <laughs> That's what we will say. Overprotective. <laughs> Overprotective. <laughs> we gonna say that. Shout you know? out to Draymond. Now. Shout, Shout out, out to Draymond. Draymond man. Man. Is, yo, there's a lot of emotions that go on through a basketball game. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? There's you know a bunch of people have been talking about it, but that can be a good thing and it could be a bad thing. You know what I mean? Like he's known as being the enforcer. You know, he's gonna be, you know, the backbone of that team. Mm. And, you know, at times you're gonna you're gonna get positive things from that, but also you know, you can get some negative with it. I, so I he'll, he'll never, be fine. It was, you know, I never unfortunate heard situation. I suspended indefinitely. Yeah, that's like, you life. on time out, yeah. bro. You know, like, like, it's like they're going to send back, they just watching like, shit, we bring him back in about ne next year, two more years. Yeah, we're we going we so gonna, like we gonna to see what it. all you need. That's what they did with Jai at first. It was like indefinite, and then they gave a, a actual time. Dang, so indefinitely, not knowing when you coming back and no pay. Yeah. <sighs> Indefinite, yeah, indefinite, because I think they already started the conversations that like he got a, there's like a checklist of shit he got to do before Damn. like being reinstated into the league or like before he can even get to that that moment of, all right, this is your, your timeline until you can yeah. return. I did appreciate that he kind of stand, like, he, he, he after the it. game, you know, he knew he made a mistake and yeah. was like, yeah, I, I meant to hit him. Yeah. You know, like, you know, you uh, I, out to him? at least he. Uh-uh, I haven't talked to him. You don't want to get involved in that. Like, catch one himself. Oh, I he didn't was, see that. I mean, he was grabbing him. He was grabbing his pinch. hip. He was, but I think he but it, it wasn't easy. enough to, like, to retaliate. I yeah. wish he would have, like, hit him, hit him. If anything, like, I would have maybe just <laughs> smacked his arm. Like, I mean, he, 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 he already did it, you know what, what I mean? About? Like, it was more one of these and yeah. instead of one of those. It was like, it wasn't you like try to make punch. it look like I didn't, like, it, yeah, like I wasn't, whoa. if I really wanted to fuck him up, I would have punched him, but. Draymond said he didn't flop, but. I don't know. I like a floppy. <laughs> it looked a little, a little floppy. It looked a little floppy when he was doing what he. But he was he grabbing did. him. He was grabbing. If anything, I would have like, I would have like punched his, his arm or elbowed his yeah. arm. Like or told the, the I don't know. Told, tell the ref a fish so he can catch it. Something. <laughs> ref, shit. He's grabbing. Like me. ref, look, man. He, he keep doing it. I'm a, You know me. I'm gonna do. It. You better get him. <laughs> it's like they got a at, at the point. At, at some point, the, the, the refs should know Draymond. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's actually a good point. Like if Draymond they, says they something, should know their, they, should they should know who really they're better call everything. Not, not to baby him or nothing, but like check into what he's saying. Yeah. Like, hey, the dude grabbing me, I don't want to get crazy, but you know, check him, man. <laughs> like they need to work with him or something because I think if they work with him, he have it'll be understanding. But if they don't, if he getting frustrated in the game and they mad, all that does is make Draymond more mad. Yeah. And he's gonna do, oh, y'all didn't see that? All right, all right. And then he goes and do something, you be like, damn, Draymond, I didn't know you was gonna do it like that. Right. But 
I just think he, I like Draymond. He's going to be all right, man. He's going to be all right. He's going to be, be all right. We all are waiting. We all are waiting to see what the fate is, but he he gonna be all right. Yeah, he Clay had a good game too. He he, I know Clay's been in yeah a little bit of a funk per se, and he had a, a good a good three point shooting night. So that was encouraging to see a fellow yeah podcast P member do well. Guys, did you know that eighty percent of men will experience hair thinning in their lifetime? It's normal, but it doesn't have to be your fate. You can get ahead of thinning with Nutrafol. I knew that, and that's why I shaved my head years ago. So look, y'all, take control of your hair's future with Nutrafol, the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. So you don't have to do that. <laughs> Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting root causes of thinning, such as stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism through whole body health. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code PODCASTP. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommended Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men and enter promo code PODCASTP. That's Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code podcast P. If y'all don't know, I'm a big Nicki Minaj fan, so you already know I got to go see her tour when it come out here. All right? And with today's episode being sponsored by SeatGeek, you know where I'm going to purchase some tickets. That's a great move because SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app with more than 70,000 events every day from sports to concerts and more. So I'm not surprised that's where you're going to get those tickets. And they put all the tickets across the web in one place so you know you're getting the best deal. They rate the tickets on a scale from 1 to 10. And finally, every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. So make sure y'all use my code PODCASTP for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code PODCASTP. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Nothing is more exciting than welcoming the new NBA season. But what adds to the excitement is 2K being back as well. Because I got to give it to PG and Dallas. I got to give them them L's on the game this season, baby. <laughs> Sounds like a little bit of fake swag. I know I'm wearing the crown right now with the 2K, Stop. so we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. You know, Stop. what crown? Oh, crown of what? The 2K mobile crown. Crown royal? What? <laughs> oh my God. You are not seeing me in 2K, bro. All I bro. will Stop say it. is that when the real games are over, you can stay locked into the hoops with season six on 2K Mobile. The thing that's great about NBA 2K Mobile is I can take it anywhere with me and build my ideal dream team or customize my very own my player all through my phone. Plus, you can lock in with crew mode and dominate the hardwood with your very own squad. Download NBA 2K Mobile free on the App Store or Google Play and use my promo code PODCASTPG to receive a pearl tier card of yours truly. Oh, the pearl tier. Pearl. And now joining us to the show, we have the newest Clipper. This guy is a gold medalist from Sal's Guitar. Okay. Germany. <laughs> My guy, okay. Daniel Tice. Appreciate you, Appreciate guys. you coming through. You got a lot of different languages. I like that. Yeah, you feel me? Sal's Guitar. Sal's Guitar. No, it's good. That was good? good. Did yeah. I say it right or I just I no, fucked it all the right. way up? It's good. Okay. Was that the Babel app? It was a Babel app. Okay, it was a Babel app. Okay, okay. Babel app. Sure. <laughs> yeah. He's getting it right. Uh, what's up, man? Appreciate you coming through the, uh, on the show. Me, man. You know how you liking the set? How you liking the the, the production well, over I here? I haven't seen the old one, but this shit is pretty nice, man. Yeah, Are you yeah. Our first with the first guest with the new with the new set. So it's an honor for me. Yeah, it's a swaggy, huh? Yeah, we're gonna take a yeah. piece of your uh, your uh, clothes, and we are gonna leave that first uh, a souvenir. We are gonna just hang it up like <laughs> they do Elvis <laughs> outfits. Cut it off. Yeah, he was the first one, so you got to get an award or something today. We're gonna give you a gift. Some podcast P attire. Okay, 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 I'll take that. Yeah, we got you. So, Daniel, I heard there's an interesting story behind playing against PG for the first time. Can you walk us and talk us through that experience? I don't know if it was the first time, but obviously having the same agent and agencies, like, I only hear good things about P. So, and then at a certain point, I'm a big soccer fan. And soccer, like, you know, jersey exchange is, is, um, is big. So, I started collecting jerseys, play P, ask him in the game, say, oh, you might give me a jersey after the game. He looked at me and said, I don't do this. 
and walked away. Wow. And I was like, You did that, B? <laughs> yeah, I was weird. Like, I was, I don't know, maybe my first or second year. So, like, I'm new in the league. And I was like, He said, No, I don't do this. I was hurt. No. <laughs> I don't hurt. need that word. You I don't, say, I don't do this. <laughs> I don't do it. Maybe what's so long. I don't, I don't remember. Game. I don't remember it. But when you told me the story, I felt I did feel like an asshole when you when you told the story. <laughs> it was like You know they're gonna find the clip. They they probably <laughs> are. They probably are. Probably this are. was during the game? During the game. Man. Yeah, I don't know, maybe I, it was I, just I, locked in or something, but I might have been pissed at the refs and you just caught the bad end of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was fun. I, I got I got it over over a couple corners later. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah I was going to so say. YT, YT hooked him up. YT yeah, got YT him got it. What jersey you got? The Clippers jersey. The Clippers? Yeah. Okay. It's up in my wall, on my wall now, my gaming room. Yeah, he showed me the room and I was like, oh, okay. That's... Did you sign so special for YPR? <laughs> no, 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 you just signed. <laughs> just sign. <laughs> I don't do this. <laughs> yeah, you said, don't do I this. don't do this so <laughs> I don't do this. That's God your bless. And you know you said that because he remembered that. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, You said that. I heard that you say that. That sounds like some shit I would say, but I don't remember it. I don't remember it. I think it was the only. The only one until now who said like, I don't do this. <laughs> yeah, buddy, has like a jersey. He's like, mm. I was just gonna say, was he the only guy that just shut it only down? Only guy. Only guy. I have I have a couple of jerseys on the even guys I haven't played with or just against it, but he was the only one. Yeah, I've hey, done that a couple hey. times too. I just I don't know. I'll be like, oh yeah, yeah. Once I'm getting it back, I'll, I'll have him send it to you. Then I, I it, honestly, I, I forget <laughs> it's sometimes. Better than saying no. Honestly, I, don't I forget. Yeah, yeah. That, that sounds like a whole different story. I forget but... sometimes. Honestly, like I'll be like, yeah, yeah. Like once we get in the back, because like it's you know after the game, like you take your shirt off. Like damn, bro, I ain't trying to take my shit off right here. Who the last person <laughs> you just get your jersey to? Last person I get my jersey to? Jersey swap? I don't know. Yeah, I know. Well, we need to get to know. Good yeah. to find out. I don't know who's the last one. I, 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 I did it. I did it with somebody, but I forget. It wasn't this season though, probably okay. last season. Daniel, who was the first person you asked for a jersey? Like talk a little bit about your collection. Who was the first guy you asked and who are some of the guys that you now have in your collection? Oh, that's a good question, the first one. I mean, obviously having teammates, then who I have on my wall, I have PG, I have KD, Kyrie, I played with Jason Tatum. I got a person like the weight jersey there from his go. last year. Mm. Who else I got? Drew Edelman, Super Bowl jersey up there. So multiple sports. Yeah, some soccer jerseys. There you go. From German guys, like mm -hmm. from back home. So I just like it having it on the wall, like all the jerseys. Which one your favorite one right now? I gotta say, I don't know. After all this whole story, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say here? Oh, I don't Maybe do if that. I get a new one with something, <laughs> so yeah, the more than search one. on it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the Julian Edelman Super Bowl jersey special. Yeah. yeah. And obviously yeah. the person like D Wade jersey. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those definitely trump me. Definitely, definitely trump me. Paul's would be on the lower end, probably. <laughs> I was, I was, on, I, 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 I was on the bottom of his wall. No, no, I, was on, yeah. I, I was on the bottom yeah, of his yeah, wall. You in a garage or something like that? It's up, it's up on the wall. I have a couple still in storage yeah, yeah. somewhere. Nah, nah, it, it, it's up there, man. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just giving you shit. I, I appreciate it, bro. That, I appreciate you gotta it. Give one of his jerseys for now sure. Put it on the wall for sure. I got it. I got it. And and that shit looked dope. Like I got a bunch of jerseys that I. I just been holding on to, but I actually need to start putting them on the walls. Um, so you kind of like seeing seeing that video you sent. Like yeah. it kind of like, oh okay, shit, I, that shit looks good. Let me let me let me I get my I, shit right. And I did it on my myself too. You it did it yourself? Me, not the framing, but hanging it up oh, there. Okay, okay. okay. It took me like three days. I don't know how many up there. Like twelve, yeah, maybe? twelve jerseys or fifteen. It took me like three days. Was you using like a ruler and shit and the like ruler, a, measurement, you just, everything, every that distance, that looked, that looked left, right, symmetrical? Oh you my god, that helped you. Remember the one you said build stuff? No, no, nobody helped me. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling myself. All right, DT, let's go back to the beginning of your career, right? Seven years in the league. You started off as an undrafted rookie, and then you get picked up by the Celtics. Talk to us about that journey from being undrafted to then now playing with the Celtics early in, in your career. So I decided when I was like early 20s to stay, stay overseas, stay in Germany, to develop my game mm -hmm. just to a point because when I, my goal was to go in the NBA and play. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to be like the 15th man going to G League back and forth. There mm -hmm. wasn't, there wasn't for me. Like I had a goal. If I go, I want to play. And then in Germany, I had a good time. We won three championships in a row. Mm -hmm. And then I remember Austin Ainge was in, in Germany at my games. And then after my third championship, he just texted me. Yeah, I think it's time for you to go. Mm -hmm. Like, come come to Boston, like, win championships there. Mm -hmm. And then I felt like it's the right time for me after, I think I started when I was 17, 16, mm -hmm. 17, played professional. At that point, I was 24, 25 to, to come to the NBA. So mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, that's the right time for me to go. So you said Austin Ainge. So that's Danny Ainge's son, right? He's, yeah, I think he's, 
I don't worry about like scout, head scout of, of the Celtics. At that point, the European scout. And at that point, I felt like I got to go, man. Yeah. Just three chips later. So it wasn't after the first one. <laughs> like, ah, <sighs> not ready yet. When the second one, ah, still that not three, ready yet. Man. You want the three peak. Three then finally and then felt like, you know what? I'm ready for that next. Time to go, yeah. Okay. Just next steps. Like, like I said, three championships in Germany. It was easier going to the NBA, um, NBA mm-hmm. or go to like a bigger EuroLeague team. Mm-hmm. Just. Leave and Germany. you had no, like, prior to this, no, like, American experience, no U.S. experience. I, I played Summer League. I played Summer League in, I mean, like, I think 2014. Okay. With the Wizards. Okay. I think the year when um, Otto Porter got drafted, this year I played. That's the year you played. Summer League. I did a couple of workouts. I worked up for Philly, um, Miami. Okay. But, boy, the hardest workout I've ever done in my life. Uh, that's <laughs> from everybody. I had a Miami workout. That shit was hard as hell. What makes yeah. it so hard? <laughs> but, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you tell me. <laughs> shit. Right <out> the game. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it, my <laughs> great question, Jackie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what makes it so difficult, guys? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it just, Miami's workouts is like, they're designed to challenge you, like, and I, all, you know, all the workouts, you know, it, that's their goal is to try to make you, you know, see if they can break you or see if that's they right. can, you know, get the most out of you. But Miami shits is just, they're different, bro. Like, we was playing full court, yeah. one-on-one, like, it just shit that you don't do, but, like, they want to see if you can handle that. Yeah. yeah, That was the one you talked about where you had to defend the guards full yeah, court. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That was by far one of my, my toughest workouts. So, yeah. yeah it, that's, yeah. like, you hear that from everybody. Miami, like, yeah, it, that's yeah. that's when that's you realize, so. all right, I'm, I I'm in the draft. J, uh, JJ said that. Yeah. Uh, he, I think he said that, yeah. too. It was, it was a couple yeah. guys. A couple guys said that Miami was a tough one. Yeah, but um, yes, summer league. I played one year summer league. And then I was like, yeah, that's a big. Sometimes hard to play summer league, and when you have high drafted guys who just mm-hmm. try to show off, shoot a lot. So, and then I think a year later or two years later, I had a chance with with Boston to come in the NBA. Mm-hmm. What was uh? So what was that like moment after you signed with the Celtics? What was that like? I'm I'm in the NBA. Like, what was that that moment for you where you realized? All right, I'm living out my dream. Like I'm playing in the NBA now. It was like, like I said, like a dream for me. Like, it, like, like a kid. Like I play video games. I play 2K at that point, and then I come to a team with Kyrie signed there. Mm-hmm. Gordon Hayward was there. Al Horford was there. Mm-hmm. Like, Jalen Brown was there. Marcus Smart. Like all those guys. I came in with um, Jason the same year. He mm-hmm. was young, but just being on the same court, the same locker room, and see those guys' personality, not just what you see on TV. Mm-hmm on the basketball court, just their personalities. And I was just stunned. Yeah. Like, I was just like, wow. Yeah. I think that is like the initial part of like that welcome to the league moment. Cause that like similar to me, like my first, you know, training camp, you know, there's uh, Danny Granger, Roy Hibbert, uh, Brandon Rush, TJ Ford, Mike Dunleavy. Like these are guys, James Posey, like some way or another, like that I've watched or I've admired or looked up yeah. to or, you know, just had a moment of watching them in the NBA and now like I'm competing with them in drills. They, you know, they looking at me like young fella, young fella, like little bro, like, you know, and it was a real like building a brothers, like a brotherhood, a camaraderie here. Um, I think that was like the the first welcome to the league, like the initial welcome to the league moment there when you're looking at these guys and like, these is my teammates. Like these is the guys that got my back. These are the guys I'm going to war with, riding for. Um, and so like, yeah, like that's, I feel like that's that first step of like, all right, I'm here. Mama, we made it. <laughs> and I was fortunate with Al Horford, Aaron Baines, man. They took me really under the wings. Like, yeah. I remember my first, I think we played Milwaukee. I think it was maybe a preseason game. Al Horford took me right to dinner, sat down with me, talked to me about the whole NBA life, mm-hmm. what you need to do. Like, even if you don't play, stay ready, like get your work, like mm-hmm. everything. Like, and I was mm-hmm. like, so stand in a positive way like there's somebody mm-hmm. i just met like two a week ago right. two weeks ago something just takes me to dinner takes me on his wing and is telling me all about the nba life like mm-hmm. try to help me mm-hmm. to grow in this you stay in listen. contact with him yeah always, always 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 every time it seemed like he's he's so g like he was always the papa of the team like he was always the oldest so calm like yeah. i don't know if you you've played against him a bunch so yeah he was always there for everybody, like really. And then 
and to this day, like every time I see him, like talking about the kids, the family, like. Is he still giving you uh, advice on, on your game like right now? Less on the game, just more about like when we talk about life, mm -hmm. like just in general. Like he texts me the summer when we played the World Cup, like mm -hmm. just um, when I see him in the summer. I worked out in Boston this summer, like I've seen him and just talk regular stuff. So mm -hmm. it's, it's always great to have somebody yeah, how, like this. How good people, man. He's actually a PG, uh, he's a PG6 guy. You know, he wears the PGs out there. So big, big fan of Al Horford over here. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> he's a PG. He's a PG guy. Okay. So now I'm gonna start Solid. watching to see if he really be having them all. It, it, play two okay. K. They don't. They put any two on two K. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean you watch him. He's wearing the, the PG sixes. Surprised he, he ain't wearing he's a Chuck Taylor. Huh? <laughs> Chuck Taylor. So old school. <laughs> yeah, and I, I want this on the record because you just mentioned video games. But ironically, when 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 you came to the Clippers, it seems like you gelled immediately like a great role player something that the team needed and you just seem like a good teammate and i just want everyone out there to know that that same teammate mentality applies to his call of duty abilities <laughs> anytime you need somebody to run with he we've been we're pc man, bros man. now talk about but availability seriously bro he's always there he's the comms are on point comms are I, great i've really enjoyed these last couple of days playing call of duty <laughs> with you yeah. you've been on like the last two games two days right maybe three, three. Yeah. I ain't played we've been, three. Been, I've been in the discord but i haven't played yeah. yet with him I gotta watch what I say. Damn, yeah, that's crazy. My bad. Let me go tissue. I can't say nothing on this show. So Daniel Dirk is one of the greatest players to ever play in the NBA, and you know I know growing up in Germany, his impact uh, is probably larger than life. But talk a little bit about his impact on your life and just in general when it comes to German basketball. Like you said, like just. Everybody who follows basketball in Germany looks up to Dirk. Like what he's done in the NBA, spent over what, I think 21 years, 22 years. 22, 21, 22. Winning a championship, just the, the way he played like as a, as a big man sh shooting jumpers, one leg fade away, threes, everything. It's like everybody who's a basketball fan, like looked up to him for me was, my, my brother's 10 years older. So, but he was like all boards in the, in the nineties. I grew up with like all bold stuff, Michael Jordan, Chicago stuff, all around. And then I was like, I started basketball late, but for me, it was always like I looked up to KG a lot. Mm -hmm. Like KG, my favorite player. Um, when I grew up next to next to just Dirk and like seeing him obviously play. Mm -hmm. But the whole impact of basketball is, is Dirk. Like in Germany, it's like I don't think he can he can walk the streets without being like swarmed by people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was kind of like a big three and like that that era of like between Dirk, KG, Tim Duncan, like that was like the the pinnacle for power forwards at that time. And like it, it, however way you want it, if you was more shooting, I'm gonna take Dirk. If you want a little bit both sides, I'm gonna take KG. If you want a little bit like just consistency and and just, you know, you know what you're gonna get, like a winner, yeah, you're gonna take TD. Like, so it was just, yeah, Dirk was at a pinnacle at that point. Have you had a, ever had a chance to, uh, like, meet Dirk? You got a relationship with Dirk? I played against him a couple of times. I oh, think okay. When I was in the league, I think he had two, he played two more years. Okay. Um, I never had a chance to play with him. When he played national team, I wasn't playing or the other way around. Yeah. So, unfortunately, never played with him, but a couple of times. And played against him. Okay. Against him, yeah. Do you have a relationship with him or? Um, unfortunately, no. Like, like I said, we never really met. Like he was this summer, he was um, at the World Cup a little bit. Yeah. But um, not, not really, to never, be honest. I mean, like, you ain't yeah, never like, yo, like, what's we up, always Dirk, man? Like, cross, like we never crossed path really, so. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. I, I, I seen him, you know, there uh, a couple times throughout the FIBA, you know, him alongside cheering you guys on. Um, yeah, he, he was there um, this summer when we played, especially when we played Slovenia with Luca. Yeah. he was there. Um, and also he's like the FIBA ambassador. He was, um, he, he never, he never came to our locker room. I think he was more like zero guys moment. Yeah. He wasn't front, he dipped everybody up and then yeah. everybody saw him kind of, but I mean, just having him there sit there supporting us yeah. and it's cool. Okay. I I'm curious what, you know, obviously you, you like Dirk Nowinski, but the KG thing, like, was there a game or a moment? Like what kind of 
attracted you to be a fan of his? Would, do you have any stories like as a child? Because I would think it would be Dirk. So I, I'm kind of interested on why it was KG for you. I think when I got into basketball, just watching just KG's mindset, like the positive craziness he had on the court, like mm -hmm. he went to every game meant to like, I'm going to destroy whoever I play. Just like this stuff, like he was, he winning battles in his mind before the game even started. Mm -hmm. Talking his, talking his <laughs> shit against people, like just going, get into them. Like, and it was like for me, you know, it's, it's, that's crazy. That's nice. Like mm -hmm. I really liked it. Just the intensity going in there. He treated every game the same game. Was it a game in the finals or like a regular season game? Mm -hmm. He went out there, he went to war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did have that same, even in pickup games. I played pickup games with yeah. him and he was doing the same shit. Like just calling motherfuckers out, like like damn, Katie, we just playing twenty like twenty one, like <laughs> chill. Yeah, Daniel, I don't know if you've listened to any of our episodes. Um, you don't have to answer that, but Carl Anthony Towns gave us a story of he was playing Call of Duty with KG, and he said that you know the Call of Duty you're in the voice game chat, and he said he was just going crazy on the lobby going crazy intense, so i bro, think he has him. that same mentality uh, against the call of duty lobby that's what i heard when he had his um his own um er, what was it area 21 or something yeah that he was like before the show started he was <laughs> preparing himself like he went to an into an nba game talking to himself yeah. and just like, getting ready and like <laughs> Jeez, that was just, man. shout out kg then, man he intense shout then, out to the KG. then in boston i was i was lucky i i, I got to meet him like a picture with him and like that's, yeah. that's another uh, moment like when you said a dream come true for me yeah all of a sudden you stand next to your idol right taking pictures talk to him like right that's the jersey you gotta get that's right. the one that's one thing i do notice with boston like they're very like close with their alums and they you know um they come back i know paul pierce is yeah. you know there a ton of time in boston spending time with jason Jalen, um kg is always yeah. you know there you know you see big baby at games you know, so I, I do love the culture of Celtics, you know, that Celtic pride. Um, they do show out with their, with their, their, you know, alum in their yeah. ties. So, you know, shout out to those guys. Um, on the subject of, of the FIBA, congrats on winning, you know, Appreciate the World it, Cup. Shout out on that. Sure. On that championship run, you get to play against USA, right? And you, you had a, a big, big night, 21 and seven. What part of that game or which part of that game did you feel like, all right, like this is, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have a great one tonight. Like I'm feeling it. I was actually motivated before the game, to be honest. Okay. Like just after having a what tough- way? Having a tough year last year, Indiana, like mm -hmm. after I had my surgery, I only played seven games. I got shut down because young guys um, had to play. Mm -hmm. And since the season was over for me in like February, March, like for me, my whole mindset was, World Cup. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get best shape I can get, best basketball shape, my body, everything. So I was four months straight mm -hmm. preparing for the World Cup, mm -hmm. and then we played Team USA in Abu Dhabi before before the World Cup started. We were up 15 before the fourth. We lost that game. Mm -hmm. We went to the locker room. Everybody was like, "That's the best thing we could, what could happen to us. Mm -hmm. We know we can play with them. We lost. Perfect. Then playing the semifinals against them, I was like. It's time. It's time. Yeah. It's time to beat them. For me, just personally, just to show that I can still play after a tough year, then playing the NBA. Like I was like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a go out there. I play the best game mm -hmm. I, can, I can do. Help my team win. Mm -hmm. She's playing all those guys over there with, uh, John Jackson, defensive player of the year. They had a couple of odds. Mm -hmm. so people were scoring a lot of points in mm -hmm. the NBA, playing good teams. So I was like, I'm a go out there. I'm mm -hmm. playing my, play my heart out, like mm -hmm. whatever it is. And it worked out pretty well for that game for sure. Yeah, no, I did. What was y'all like general mindset going into that Olymp or FIBA Cup uh, run? Was it like, all right, we got a chance to win this? Was it like, all right, let's take this shit one game at a time, <laughs> see where we get? Was it like, were, were y'all just like automatically like, uh, this? we got a good chance, fellas. Let's, let's try and go get this goal. So like, like you know like sometimes before before tournaments you meet or before nba season you meet try to make up goals and stuff mm -hmm. so meta was always to go but at one point like a week after f training camp or something we start we said now we we want to get gold mm -hmm. like why s set it for meta when like we want to have gold mm -hmm. we had a good euro basket a year before lost to spain in semifinal ended up with bronze 
But this one was like, nah, we want to we wanna have gold. We, mm-hmm. we have a chance to win it. And our team was, our roads were clear. Like, we just knew that Dennis is our main guy with Franz Wagner. Mm-hmm. And everybody had just do whatever it takes. Mm-hmm. Like, we had every game, we had somebody else scoring, playing defense, doing like, whatever it takes. We're like, no, nah, we, we're going to go out there. We go for gold. Mm-hmm. Like, from day one, basically, we're like, no, nah, we, we have a chance to win it all. Got it. Okay, so, and then after beating... Serbia in the finals, right? Serbia is a stacked team and, and, and been very good in many of Olympic runs, FIBA runs. Uh, we actually played them uh, to win the championship in 2016 to win a GOAT. I get my wife shit every time for this because she's Serbian, <laughs> okay, <girl>. right? <laughs> what was the craziest thing that happened when you returned back home? I think we talked about this uh, when we were in San Antonio, I believe, yeah, um, I after yeah, y'all yeah. had won it. What was that, that like atmosphere like going back home or you said you didn't go back so home. So I didn't go home yet. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, that's right, that's right. No, I'm just like, after winning it all, like just, for us was always, we try to write our own story too. Like, every time we play for the national team, it was like, when we got to the semifinal, it was like the first time since Dirk, like 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. The year before when we won bronze, it was like the first medal since this. Like, mm-hmm. for us was at one point, like we want to um, write our own story. Mm-hmm. And when we reached the final, it was like, the first time ever, like for in the World Cup, and winning Cup. gold, it's the first time ever. Yeah, and like we our own story, just realizing it, it took a while, man. Yeah, and then for me, it was like everybody else. I played my um, flight home a little while ago, and I didn't see my family, my kids for like the whole summer, basically mm-hmm. for like five or six weeks, and then I was like, yeah, I gotta go home. Mm-hmm. There wasn't no like no FOMO, like no FOMO to that, cause like. I mean, you said it yourself. Like it's first time y'all y'all have done this. First time y'all come. It's like us winning a championship in L.A. and immediately after we win it, like say I'm from, you know, uh, New York, and I'm like, you know what, I gotta go back to New York. Like, no, nah, I gotta feel that. Like we just won this shit. So I think like our federation wasn't really or nobody really expected us to win it. You know Even what I'm better. But so nothing was really planned in yeah. the beginning. And then yeah. when I had my my flight was booked home, like back to Boston, and then. They told me like a day before or something, yeah, we might have like a little, some people coming to the airport. Yeah. And I, and I was like, I got to either your plan it the right way yeah. or not. And then I was like, <laughs> in a way I was like, I, I could have probably gone home to Germany a little bit, just enjoy this moment a little longer. Yeah. But hopefully. I can, I can tell you what year, it's man. like when you expect to win. We want to go, I came home and it was just, all right, we want to go. Like nobody was like, "Hey, congrats, <laughs> D, Like good shit, y'all represented." Like, like yeah. it was just, oh, I got this medal. Like, all right, what's next? Like, I got my, me. I got my own little party at I home. I had to throw my I own party. Home. Yeah, we, I, I, I threw I my own party honest. at the house for it. When I, when I got home, I think I landed at six a.m. in Boston. The next, or I had a twenty-hour flight or something, mm-hmm. and I had my host. I had everything like a party at home for my kids, my wife. I mm-hmm. prepared everything. It was like. It was my own self. It was it was really good, great too. But yeah. um, but even afterwards, uh, like maybe like you said, for for y'all was different because Team USA is always expected to win the gold. Mm-hmm. But even like the recognition I had throughout the season, like people walking up to me, like just like, man, congrats on the gold, like mm-hmm. FIBA, like even in Indiana, those pe- all the um the teammates, coaching staff. Yesterday, even Steve Kerr walked up to me, like yo, congrats on the summer, yeah, mm-hmm. great great run, great team, like really congrats. Mm-hmm. Like that means a lot. Like yeah. you know, like this German basketball, like the acknowledging like people that we what we achieved there. No, nah, yeah, I mean y'all forever cemented as a special and, group. And now we we made Team USA try to to bring everybody now for next year. Yeah, that's see what <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Okay, I reloaded. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, because I I had that conversation right after uh, we played uh, the Warriors. Steve Curry's like, hey. Any interest in playing the Olympics this summer? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> no, like I said, that's like a like for us just as a team was it's a compliment. Like now, I don't say it's it's tough to say like when Team USA the, the guys had on it like, like I said defense player of the year with in Jackson mm-hmm. all stars people make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Like, saying it's not it's like the second or third team. Mm-hmm. It's, it's tough to say, but. Mm-hmm. Now, after losing to us and everybody was like, nah, we got to bring mm-hmm. the big dogs. Yeah. <laughs> like and and y'all, y'all shouldn't feel no guilt. 
yeah. about that, right? Like that's fucking Team USA fault. Like, yeah. And I called it. Like, there it was a very talented group. You know, all of them are now flourishing in the league now. It was a very talented group. I just thought it takes a different mindset, and players have to be in the right part of their career mm-hmm. to take that and accept that challenge. You know, you're looking at guys that all are transcending into being a star and, yep. and to being yep. the guy and the go-to. But what is that like when you're there already and now it's like, all right, how can I be better at this point? Like, yep. And I think that's where, when you look at putting Kobe together, LeBron, D-Wade, all of them have already reached that superstardom yeah. and they reached that level that these young guys were trying to reach or, or headed to. Um, so now for those guys, it's like, all right, how can I be a better teammate how can I be a better passer how can I be a better role player how can I do little shit like how can I you know do the small stuff to to bring this team together so I just think it's tough when you put a bunch of young guys that 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 are trying to find their way and then now you ask them to you know figure out how to play as a figure team play, yeah. yeah that's how it kind of looked like I remember after the um Abu Dhabi game with Therese I talked to him after the game and he was like just I, I still try to figure out like what what version of Tyrese they want. They mm-hmm. want the Indiana Tyrese. Like mm-hmm. I'm a passer. They mm-hmm. want me to shoot. Like mm-hmm. I said, like they're young. It's like hard to mm-hmm. to put together a team. I think what was it? LeBron said after when all this Olympic came up when, when he said when they asked him, "Yeah, you want to play?" And he said, "Yeah, I'll be there. I pass the ball a little bit, get a rebound, yeah, get a block here and there, and that's it." Like, right, like right. So it's like you in the stage of your career, like. Right. Yeah, I don't have to be the. You don't the have go, to shoot. Like, you, like, don't, yeah. you don't have to care about the. Mm-hmm. You go four points. All right, cool. Like mm-hmm. next guy, and like <laughs> mm-hmm. John. That was that was kind of on our team. Like that was a great. What made us great this summer? Like mm-hmm. we all knew our roads completely. Mm-hmm. Like we had one goal, and every and we sacrificed mm-hmm. like just to win mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So DT, we appreciate your time on the show. We appreciate you blessing us with your appreciate presence you here, me, man. It was fun. Uh, we'll be on the duty tonight, right? Yeah, your new Wi-Fi, yeah, yeah, your yeah, Wi-Fi, yeah, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi at the house. Uh, we got, we got to mention it, though. P been, P been leaving, man. <laughs> His Wi-Fi rage is bad. He just goes That's exactly. MIA. <laughs> you see him stay in the Discord, hey. yeah, yeah. but he gone. Then like an hour later, you hear like how he hung up. Yeah, he gone. Yeah, like, right, right, so I'm done. I'm done. Is this the squad man. tonight? Uh, it, it can't be. It can't be. <laughs> we'll see. I'm not gonna lie, like y'all don't know this, but I've been like legit rage quitting. Oh, like, I did. I, fuck this game. I can tell you that frustrated. Wait, because you're so locked in and fixing the issue, like, yeah. dude. I don't know if I told you, but like, literally, like 20 minutes later, it felt like I'm, I Facetime him and like he's got like a new router open. I'm like, are the Wi-Fi guys there already? Like, he's like, man, I gotta get there coming tomorrow, but the router's here. I was here. trying like, to do it myself, like <laughs> on YouTube God. and shit. Went like, to Spectrum. Yeah, I took this. my. I, I actually went to Spectrum, bro. Like, went my son i actually went to spectrum like hey guys like can i, I didn't even know what to I'm ask having for a like packet loss <laughs> issue what can you do <laughs> I got one yeah. packet loss. Yeah. but m- maybe it was just an excuse man yeah uh-huh. he didn't play well i'm not gonna lie like the first day he was like good and then like it was down there they said man i'm lagging yeah, yeah. 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 there's something going on here i, I know this can't no, be man. me it's not all me oh, <laughs> but uh yeah we appreciate you brother no, appreciate, appreciate you having me man thank you all right fellas before we wrap the show, we got a little Postman P moment right here where we answer questions from our fans. So uh, let's see what we got. Well, our first question is from Morales Corner. Talk to us about some of your funniest teammates ever and share some inside stories from players who are not stars and people may not know how much about. Uh, Funniest teammate. My f- funniest teammate was probably Monte. Monte. <laughs> Monte and Gerald Green. Oh my God, it was two funny dudes right there. Monte was just his, you know, that country, Southern, like some of the shit he say. Yeah, shout out Monte, uh, G Green, another funny uh, teammate I had. I had a lot of funny teammates, man. Uh, Shout out Donald Sloan, funny as hell. Shout out Ray Felton, funny as hell. Your voice, uh, 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 is it Lance? Lance, Lance, shout out Lance, funny as hell. Uh, who else? Why? Well, they, they said <laughs> not stars. Oh, yeah, did, 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 Uh, and not know much about. Um, who else, man? Funny as hell. Solomon Hill, funny teammate. Uh, man, I've been lucky to have some really good teammates, man. That just like bigger than basketball. Like, you know what I mean? Like that that relationship. Like they they just individuals that I learn from to just enjoy the game. You know, 
Um, so shout out those guys, man. They were, they were, you know, they they made coming to work very easy. All right, the next question comes from Cirque. Does PG ever see himself being an NBA coach once he retires? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> college coach. I can see myself being more of a college coach. I can see myself either being more of a college coach or being a defensive coach, like teaching the defense side. Like that. Group, but I, I just, I don't know. Like at this point, after playing, to go and like travel and do all this shit all over again as a coach, like I just don't see that for myself. What about if maybe if your kids decide to play basketball, would you ever think Absolutely. about doing a, a high school, middle school kind of kind of being the? Absolutely, you know, I would love to. Fun. I would love to coach my children and, and be their coach or where at whatever stage of life. Um, you know, hope I would love to ride it out until they're, you know, didn't say they say they're done or if they go on to the next level, like. And hell yeah, I would love to. I know you're doing a lot of uh, other stuff when you're done for sure, producing. You see I, me? I, I hey, see you, I you see me? What's that, that new thing you got? You, the you desert, producing uh, the, the slam. What was it called? <laughs> amongst, amongst the trees. Amongst, amongst the, the trees. trees. Amongst so the what, trees. Can you tell us what's that all about? So it's it's kind of like the last chance you. It's kind of in that realm. Um, it's a one-off. Just basically college coaches. They're out in the Mojave Desert. They're coaching, you know, uh, Juco team, a bunch of the guys that are basically getting a second chance um, playing for this Juco. They're not getting paid any money, the coaches, but they're de devoting and they're dedicating all their time to these kids to try to help them get, you know, uh, a second chance of going on and playing college and going on with their careers. Um, so it's a super cool, like, you know, um, story, great storyline. The kids are, are, are you know, are, are kids to go and follow um, but it's cool, man. The, the kids are talented. There's some good talent um, uh, there that played on that team that I watched. Um, and so I think it's it's just dope. The kids are appreciative of the coaches being there and supporting them through this. Is this your first uh, producing project? First biggest one, yeah. And this is like, That's just amazing. to be clear, like it's not like, the, it's actually following them throughout like a, a, season. a season. Like it's yeah. like the last chance you like actual, That's it's not dope. like well, actors this, and stuff like that. Or no, is no, it, it's, it's actual like real life um, these are real kids. This is real, you know, games, real season, real coaches. Like it's an actual. I want to go to the screening. <laughs> I just pull up. I thought okay. Jason was on the. It's not Jason on the cover, is it? No. It looked no. like him, bro. The lefty. I'm like, is that Jason? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I like that though, P. So if you're down with NBA, you can maybe coach your kids. Yeah. And keep on producing. Keep baby. on producing. Yeah. There you go. I like because you can probably produce some of your sister stuff too. You know she's doing a lot of writing. She is. We got her write right now too. Yeah. I mean that's that's what we what we have initially trying to get to. Like. Yeah. You know, so we're trying to just build up the catalog, build it up, and, and see where that goes. Tiosha, and, you said you gonna have some for me this week. I want to see it. My boy Allen said you've been doing great, and I said I was gonna hook you up with the right person. So P should be proud of you too. I want to see it. Let us see some sis. Let us see some. <laughs> Let us see. No, she's writing right now. Yeah, she good. is. She, yeah, she is. She's been yeah. working. She's been doing a lot. She's I know. Working. I talked to her. I know. I gotta. I gotta remember it. I was actually thinking of a good ass show, or it could be a movie. But I. I we'll talk about it later. We'll, yeah, we'll talk about it later. We'll it's still an idea, we and we can yeah, do yeah. that. Then we won't be able to produce it. Go ahead. Right. So obvious, fellas. As we approach the holiday seasons, we'll be a little dark. You know, uh -huh. we won't. We won't it's be able to have Christmas. this moment. Not necessarily here. You know, I'm knowing one way or another we'll be conversating over the game or FaceTime or whatnot. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, but the producers wanted to know what was some of our favorite, you know, holiday gifts, Christmas gifts that we received. Mm. Man, I got a lot of good things in life. <laughs> what was your I'm, favorite? Your my favorite? favorite? I'm like, I'm, I'm honestly like a big kid, man. So yeah. it can be the smallest thing that make me happy. And probably at the time when my, um, probably my sister, because she always buy me some crazy nice gifts. I think she probably bought me at the time when when I was like I I never forget uh the uh what was them shoot the the basketball shoes that everybody wanted the uh the, jump soles the, there we go jump soles I couldn't couldn't get them nowhere yeah. whatever she got them for me I remember those and literally that was one of my like that was something that I really wanted. Yeah. And you in in my mind, deep back, I'm like, I'm not gonna get them. Yeah. So <laughs> and she so, went and got them for you, dude. I gave her the my. I love my sister to death because to this day, everybody give me nice gifts. Don't get me wrong, but my sister, she goes all out and will find 
a way you can send the hints early. Yeah. And she like, he don't know I'm listening. <laughs> and to give you the gift or yeah. something that she heard that you like or somebody said and she remember and literally she she gives great gifts to me yeah. i don't know about everybody else but to me but she know you she hooks me up so that's funny tiosha was the first person that i seen with those she had those jump soles the best shoes ever get you yeah. that bounce trying to get that bounce that's that's funny what, what was about yours you, Dallas? my favorite christmas gift probably my best memory has to be Forgot how old I was, but I remember I was freaking out, ran all over cross. I mean, it was the best reaction. My dad got me the Nintendo 64. Mm. And that was that's where it all started for me. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, we played that 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 system till yeah. it couldn't Dang, breathe Nintendo anymore. 64. But the Nintendo 64, I'll never forget Dang. getting getting that. Yeah. What's yours? I would say along those lines, it was the uh, the Dreamcast. Mm -hmm. I first got the Dreamcast. Cause before then we had like the Nintendo, we had the Sega Genesis, but I had two older sisters. So like the systems and shit was in their rooms. <laughs> Not my shit. Like, Why? <laughs> well, it, cause they shared the room and I had the only, my, my own room. And so like, right, of course. they played video games and shit too growing up. Like they used to play Super Mario's and all that stuff. So the, the systems and stuff was in their room. It's crazy. And I didn't have a TV cool. like, but early on, like I didn't have a TV and sh to set up in my room, so I would have to go to their room if I wanted to play. Um, but then when I had got the Dreamcast, like that was just mine, like that was in my room, <laughs> and so that was like that was like a big thing for me. Like the game looked way different; it looked more realistic. Like, well, you say you got it for your mom or dad? My dad. Your dad got, dad it for got you? me that Dreamcast. Uh, I was. Did you ask so him hyped. for that, or he just surprised you with it? Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely asked for that. You like, did. I, huh? I, I, that was the only gift I cared about. <laughs> get that dream be, be so dope. We still had them first gifts right there. Yeah. That'd Just how so happy dope. he was, Just, right? Damn. Did you guys do Christmas growing up? Like, I know some families, they like to like draw out of a hat and they, you know, like, okay, I'm we do that now. to you. Okay, you do that now. But growing up, was it everyone had to get a gift for everyone or was it more of a thing where like, all right, I got my sister or I got my mom and that's who I got to get my gift well, for? Well, we doing it now yeah like for the last two three years that's how you we get that. one person in the family whoever yeah. you got to pick the car because you know people money situations ain't all the same yeah. so yeah if you got somebody you can buy like i'm always what is it still called buy uh, my mom secret santa secret santa, santa. Yeah. santa. my yeah. family needs like we to have that. the thing this we have the party <laughs> we doing that now we have the party coming up to find out who we got who you got yeah okay. before so we can go yeah get we just gift. did that maybe like two weeks ago so we we do the well, secret you got santa they know? I can't, Don't tell I can't say it. Okay, okay, like, how about this? What does Paul George want for Christmas? Uh, I told my wife this. I, I want a, a fucking golf trip. A golf trip? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's it. That's, that's <laughs> unique. I did good. I want a golf trip. There you go. Give me a golf trip. I don't care where. Just give me a golf trip. That's dope. She gonna, Cause she it, gonna like, find I don't, it. I'm not a, like, I would say in my teens, like 17, 18 years old, that's when I like, maybe earlier than that, when I just like, I didn't, I didn't care yeah. about gifts. Like, I didn't. I, I tell my parents like, I don't get whatever. Like, I'm not really into gifts. So. You got everything, P. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't need nothing. Like, yeah. so I. I think I took pressure off them early. What you want for that Christmas? young? Dallas? You were like that. Yeah, I kind of just. I, I didn't really care about gifts. Yeah. What you want? I don't really have anything right now because now I'm. I'm. I'm the only thing because my my dad's like, man, I don't know what to get him. What is Christmas? What do you want? I, I think I just told him, give me some more AirPods because I lose like. Mm. I have like five different sets with one ear missing. So I'm like, just give me another pair of AirPods or something yeah. like that. But now Christmas is, is more about my nephews and that's who I'm, that's why I'm excited, excited for Christmas for just yeah. to see their reactions on the toys that they get and stuff like that. So yeah. Jackie, what do you want? Well, I always ask God every year for the same thing. I always just say, I want to work, be on set. But you know, there's a strike and all this stuff. So things are a little slow, so, uh. you know? But uh, other than that, I always ask God to just bless me with a job so I can keep doing what I love. You know what I'm saying? Love that. And, and I, I wouldn't care what type of job it is. If this is the you job. You got to ask Santa for that, though. Is, not, you know what I'm saying? All right, fellas. That's a wrap. Before we go, we wanted to let y'all know we won't be having an episode during the holiday week. So we want to wish everyone out there a Merry Christmas from Podcast P. Thank you for your love and support, and we'll see y'all next year. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, how yeah, much fun, fun it is to ride on a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! hey.